Okay, it's my name is Franzi Yasumi, and I'm going to make this presentation. Okay. Um, our presentation is focused on the results of our preliminary uh, investigation of the remaining traces of polychromy preserved on the cover tiles from the roof of Pisistrati on Telesterion, an important 6th century before Christ cover tile, um, uh, ancient Greek ritual building dedicated to Demeter and Kor. Firstly, I will introduce you to the Telesterion and they are in the aerial view. You may see the top view of the buildings in its current state. The building is located in the renowned archaeological site of Elefsins, of, Sele of Elefsis, Elefsina, as we call it, west of Athens. Here, if you can see, Elefsis. And this is um, the red line that picks the way from Athens, from ancient Athens to Elefsis through Ierados. And this is the topographical plan of the archaeological site uh, of uh, Elefsis. And the red line here uh, is uh, the Telesterion we can see here. Uh, the sanctuary of, Selef of Elefsis has been one of the most significant religious centers in antiquity. The main building of the late archaic sanctuary where uh, the Elefsinian great mystery stay, uh, took place, the Telesterion, was built out of highly worked limestone while its foundations were constructed with harder reddish limestone. Uh, from Frederick No, a German cultural historian and author, 1927, we learn that the walls of the nave, the columns, and the entablature were constructed out of limestone. It is not certain whether there were triclips and metopes. It is certain, though, that sima and roof tiles were made of Parian marble. According to Orlando's, numerous fragments were found from the roof of the, of the Pisistratio Telesterio. Apart from the cover and the air tiles, the most important part of the roof is the seamless corner, the upturned edge of the roof with the cutter in the shape of, the, uh, of an archaic ram's head. The proof that all these pieces belong together is the ma material of their construction, which is Parian marble, and their proportions. Uh, the fact that they belong to the Pisistratian building is proven by the layer they were found in, and by the traces of uh, burning their beer. The roof tiles were decorated with painted palmettes, layers of blue and red colors are still preserved on the surface of the architectural members. Its marble covered tiles or fixes were decorated with palmettes on their front sides, composed of 11 fronts spreading out of a single base and volute originally colorfully painted, as it is evidenced by the remaining traces of blue, red, and green on their surfaces. In certain pieces, the outlines of this decoration were clearly visible, um, as it documented in the drawing of Frederick Nock back in 1927. From the remaining traces of polychromy, it is possible to deduce that the fronts were rendered in bright red, outlined in blue, following the form of the carved stone. Traces of green are also visible on the palmette's base. The technological investigation of the antifixes polychromy has focused both on the areas or spots that still preserve paint layers traceable with the naked eye, and those that were reported to be colored the de de decorations uh, in the 19th and early 20th centuries literature, even though they are hardly visible today. The main objective of this project has to investigate the surviving color by employing non-destructive analytical techniques and to try to understand the original painting techniques used uh, by uh, ancient craftsmen for the application of color. At the first stage were performed uh, such as visible induced luminescence, a well-known imaging technique allowing to map the presence of Egyptian blue on the examined surfaces appearing as glowing white, as you can see uh, in this picture and also in this uh, slide. Subsequently, two other portable instruments were used in order to determine the composition of the other pigments. 
Approachable handheld FTIR spectrometer allowed us to collect spectra from pigments. A portable handheld FTIR spectrometer allowed that, uh, sorry, the spectra were obtained in the mid um, uh, infrared spectra range. This is from uh, 5,200 uh, wave numbers to 6,150 wave numbers with a spectral resolution from four, uh, wave, from four wave numbers. Egyptian blue calcite, calcium oxalates, and gypsum were identified. The presence of gypsum was identified at 11.13, 11.30, 11.25, 11.16, and 60.163 wave numbers. Egyptian blue with the characteristic triplet, uh, triplet at 1,000, 1,050, and uh, 1,160 uh, wave numbers confirmed, and also peaks due to calcium oxalates were detected. Furthermore, several spot XRF analysis were performed using the portable XRF system Tracer 5G by Brooker. The XRF analysis results revealed that the major elements detected in the blue areas were silicon, copper, and calcium, while minor amounts of lead iron, aluminum, and potassium were also detected in all spectra. In the spectra taken on the green areas, the major elements detected were sulfur, calcium, copper, and iron, accompanied by lead in some cases and silicon in two areas. The spectra collected from the red area showed uh, major elemental peaks of calcium and iron, accompanied by minor silicon and potassium elemental peaks. As it was expected, XRS analysis confirmed the presence of Egyptian blue through the identification of calcium, copper, and silica. However, XRS I'm, increased... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, please change your slides. Why? Don't you see the... No, uh, up to now, we see only the first. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, my God. Why are this happening? Okay. Um... I must change to everyone, every slide here. Uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, the aerial view. As I, can you see that now? Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know what problem is, what happened. Um, this is the archeological site, as I told you. Um, and uh, this is um, the depiction of the um, tower tiles uh, that uh, was decorated with palmettes and uh, volutes. Um, this is the VIL uh, imaging. And here, but that we can see the Egyptian blue appears as bright white, as I told you previously. Uh, left IR. I'm sorry, but uh, I didn't. You didn't tell me earlier that I didn't know that you couldn't see all the slides. And uh, I am here somewhere. Uh, um, so as as it was expected, the XRF analysis confirmed the presence of Egyptian blue through the identification of calcium, copper, and silica. However, XRF increased the possibility of the existence of malachite at the center of the antifixes. Additionally, the use of a lead-based undercoat seems probable, covering that lead is present as major element in some of the analyzed areas. The detection of an iron-based yellow in the antifixes base, originally painted in green, possibly identified as malachite, as the copper signal suggests, may be associated with the application of a yellow undercoat serving to, uh, to ensure a better uh, adherence of the sand green pigment applied on top and to achieve a warmer hue. And this is, uh, we're talking about uh, this uh, area. 
So in order to gain further insights into the painting materials and techniques employed for the polychromy of the Lessinian antifixes, it is imperative to proceed with further microinvasive analysis on microsamples. Laboratory analysis of microsamples collected from the base and the fronts of selected antifixes would allow us to evaluate, to evaluate the exact gamut of pigments used for a decoration of the antifixes, to investigate on the stratigraphy of paint layers and their composition, to the original painting technique and the organic binder that was used for the application of paint layers, and the secure identification of lead white in the lead uh, rich areas and its possible function as a filler or an undercoat, finally, on the exact composition of the yellow, red, and green pigments. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'm sorry for the 